Hi, I'm Kit. This is me. I used to be thin, now I'm a whale, but that's not important right now. One day I woke up and we were all living in a zombie apocalypse. Not cool! So everyone stayed home and watched YouTube. Hooray! I watched for a while and liked what some people were doing so much that I decided to have a go too. I've always been a big film buff, and back when I was skinny and had hair, I used to make films with my friends. Some even had royal premieres. So although I don't make films anymore, I still like to talk about them, and that's what this channel is all about, at least for now. So, good people of the apocalypse, I'm Kit, and this is my world. Hello, 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 welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a hopefully quite quick video that'll be a new one for me. This is an idea that I came up with late last night after drinking about 12 cups of coffee. I was up all night staring at the ceiling thinking about quantum mechanics and trying to remember the name of those squidgy marshmallow-like sweets that you used to toast over a campfire turns out they're called marshmallows. Who knew? Anyway, after a late night of coffee drinking, I came up with the idea of making a short video about my favourite five flying scenes in films for Friday. To be acceptable on this list, they have to fulfil some basic criteria. Number one, the actors have to perform their own flying. The second criteria is that they have to do it well. The third criteria is that the majority of the flying has to be taking place live on set, not in front of a blue screen, or in the case of a Disney film, a brown sodium vapour screen. Any travelling mats or blue screen slash brown screen effect isn't any good. It doesn't float my boat. It doesn't tickle my fancy. It's not what I'm into. I like seeing the actors swooping around and flying live on set just as they would if they were in a theatrical production because my love of wire flying began in the theatre. So that's what I want to see reflected on the big screen. So those are the criteria and based on that, here's the list. Coming in at number five, it's a double whammy, it's a twofer, two for the price of one, Mary Poppins and bed knobs and broomsticks. And the reason that I've included these two films together is that they are two peas in a pod. They're very similar films, they both have lots and lots of wire work in them. Although for the purposes of this list I made a rule that there couldn't be any blue slash brown screen work, the I love to laugh scene does involve quite a lot of brown screen. It is travelling mat and it's not strictly speaking the kind of swooping and soaring and diving live on set flying that I really like. However, there is just so much of it that I have to include it on this list because it's gluttony. I just like lots of flying and there's plenty of it in this scene. In the case of bed knobs and broomsticks, the flying isn't so much flying as swimming. It's used as a way of depicting underwater swimming during the musical number Bobbing Along, performed by David Tomlinson and Angela Lansbury on wires doing the majority of their own flying and doing it very well, considering that neither of them is a dancer and neither of them has a particularly live physique. They both fly, they do it spectacularly well, it's gorgeous choreography, it's a great song, it's far better than the cartoon animated sequences in Mary Poppins, I love it. At number four, Space Camp. Space Camp 1986, I was 12 years old and at the perfect age to enjoy a film such as this. The young cast were all pretty, they were interesting characters, they were getting to do the most extraordinary sorts of things that a young British boy of 12 years old living in South London could only dream of doing. Thanks to the Back to the Future films, I was a huge fan of Leah Thompson, so getting to see her fly around on wires 
really thrilled me. I enjoyed that more than any other aspect of the film. Because the film predated any form of digital wire removal, I got the privilege of witnessing Leah Thompson's wires up close and personal as she floated right past the lens of the camera and gave me a full-on money shot. Unfortunately, this is only really visible in the 4x3 aspect ratio VHS copy that I wore out when I was a teenager. Looking at the digital version that is anamorphic widescreen, the best bits are all cut out and you can't see it. It's not in frame. In at number three, Hook. Yes, that's right, Hook. It's not a good film. It's not a terrible film, but it doesn't have very much to recommend it, except for one really great flying scene. The scene is performed almost entirely by Robin Williams. I think there is a possible stunt double in a wide shot, but I'm pretty certain that the majority of it was performed by Robin Williams. It was performed live on set. It's proper flying. He swoops and dives and does somersaults and backflips. He does it all on set before it goes into the standard blue screen travelling mat sequence at the tail end of the scene. But the first portion of it is all on set, it's live, it's really good flying, it's exactly the sort of flying I like to see. In at number two, The Boy Who Could Fly. Now this is a particular favourite of mine. Again, it was 1986, I was 12 years old. Interesting things were taking place in my trousers. My trousers loved the film as much as I did. The Boy Who Could Fly, starring Jay Underwood and Lucy Deakins, both young, pretty, interesting, talented actors. I had a crush on them both. Lucy was beautiful in that way that only girls in the 80s could be with the terrible clothes and the terrible hair. And Jay Underwood was interesting and unusual. He was kind of dorky, just like me. I was a dork. He was a dork. It gave me permission to be dorky and still feel all right about it. But he wasn't an uncool dork. He was a very cool dork. He was weird. He was an oddball. He was an outcast. People didn't understand him. People didn't get him. That was me. C'est moi. I watched this film and felt so connected to that character and he could fly. It was like wish fulfillment for me. It was my fantasy. It was it was perfect. I was a social outcast. I was a pariah. Other kids didn't like me. I was bullied relentlessly. I had a terrible terrible time at school because I was different. And here on the screen was a kid who was arguably more different than me. And not only was he surviving and dealing with it, here on screen was a kid who could represent me, who I could relate to, who I could connect with, and he could fly. He had a secret superpower. This film was made for me. It felt very personal. It felt as if the film was made for me. And I loved it. I loved it for so many reasons, in so many ways. It's a multi-layered film. It's worth watching. Even now, it still stands the test of time. Yeah, it's an 80s movie. Get over it. It's still a brilliant film. I love it. The Boy Who Could Fly, number two. The only reason that The Boy Who Could Fly is not in the number one spot is because at number one, Supergirl. Yes, you heard me right, Supergirl. Now this is a film, like Hook, that has almost nothing to recommend it. It's a bad movie. It's almost terrible. It's borderline atrocious. However, it has one scene that redeems it. It has a flying ballet. Supergirl arrives on Earth in a beautiful, idyllic lakeside location. The sun's shining. She's got her beautiful blonde hair. She looks like a Timote commercial. In fact, I think she might have even done a Timote commercial, or certainly a commercial for Timote was based on her. I might be imagining that. I'll have to check. Helen Slater was a babe. She was gorgeous. She was really, she was my fantasy. Again, I was a kid. I couldn't help it. Things beyond my control were occurring in my underpants. And I'm not afraid to admit it. My underpants had a busy time during the 80s. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that on the internet. 
no one, and I mean no one, has ever looked that good in a Supergirl costume. And what was the first thing she did when she arrived on Earth? She sniffed a flower and floated gracefully into the air. And instead of going, oh, look, I can fly and just zooming off like Superman. She did a ballet, a beautiful ballet, a choreographed ballet, a ballet that was actually a ballet and nothing more. She performed the entire sequence herself. She did it live, on location, hanging from a crane, next to a lake, in the sunshine, dressed as Supergirl, looking beautiful. It was perfect. A, a, a flying scene in a film couldn't get more perfect than that for me. It ticked all my boxes. The only thing that I could complain about was that it wasn't slightly longer. And... As usual in movies, the flying scene that started off beautifully with live flying on set quickly devolved into a travelling mat sequence shot in front of a blue screen with helicopter shots zooming over the countryside. That's standard. What can you do? So that was my five favourite flying scenes in film on Friday. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click the like button and the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. And of course, I'm always happy to receive comments, so send those as well. <laughs> oh dear. <clears throat> please, please, please subscribe. Please, please subscribe. Please. <laughs> Oh! <laughs>